What is going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for joining me and of course I'll be continuing my series where I cover every single team and give you my NHL 2021-2022 season prediction. And for today's video we're going to be talking about the defending, defending Stanley Cup champions, the Tampa Bay Lightning. So entering last season obviously the Tampa Bay Lightning were coming off that Stanley Cup championship in the 2020 playoff bubble and everybody saw this team as a legitimate threat so to see them repeat as back-to-back -back Stanley Cup champions doesn't really surprise anybody. Taking a look at what they did in the regular season they had a very good year 36 17 and 3 record for a total of 75 points which ranked third in a very tough central division however they turned it up to another gear in the playoffs and they ended up winning the stanley cup once again taking a look at these numbers offensively a 3.21 goals for per game which was eighth in the nhl and a 22.2 percent .2 power play percentage which ranked ninth in the nhl taking a look at their defensive stats they averaged 2.59 goals against per game which ranked sixth in the nhl and an 84.2 percent penalty kill percentage which ranked fourth in the nhl taking a look at these stats top 10 across the board we all know this is an elite team and they're looking to three-peat as Stanley Cup champs. So taking a look at their top five scorers from last season, obviously without Nikita Kucherov, so the leading scorer being Braden Point with 23 goals and 25 assists for 48 points. Now Point is obviously a very elite two-way center, very solid in the regular season, but as we all know, he's more of a playoff performer and he really elevates his game come postseason. Then in second, we have Andre Palat, who had a very solid year, 15 goals, 31 assists, for 46 points in 55 games. Now Palat's basically the perfect complimentary piece on that top line with Braden Point and Akita Kucherov obviously missed some time, but those three just have an insane amount of chemistry together. And then in third, we have Victor Hedman with nine goals and 36 assists for 45 points in 54 games for the Norris Trophy nominee. Although a lot of people would point out that his overall game did take a step back. He was playing a little bit hurt. And of course, he's still a number one defenseman in this league, one of the best. Just an amazing performance from him throughout the course of the entire year. And in fourth, we had Yanni Gord, who had 17 goals and 19 assists for 36 points in 56 games. Gord's a very good third line center on this team, and he played a pivotal role in their Stanley Cup run. Very solid production here. Then in fifth, we have Steven Stamkos, who only played 38 games in the regular season, but did manage to pot 17 goals and add 17 assists for 34 points. For the captain of this team, obviously, we can see him doing a lot better because, you know, we just know that he has the elite skill and the elite goal scoring talent, but overall, still relatively solid. And goal, we have Andre Vasilevsky, who, in my opinion, is the best goaltender in the league right now. 31 10 and 1 in 42 games, a 2.21 goals against average, and a 925 save percentage. The team around him is obviously very elite. They have a ton of offensive weapons. They're one of the better defensive teams in the league. But when you need saves and key saves at that, Andre Vasilevsky is always there to answer the call. Now, obviously, like I said, this is a very elite team. They have the complete roster throughout their lineup from their forwards to their goaltending and obviously winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. Can they three-peat is the question. Now, entering this season, although it may appear that they might have downgraded a little bit in terms of their depth, this is definitely still a Stanley Cup contender and I don't think anybody would be surprised in the slightest if they won that third straight Stanley Cup. In terms of who they gained, the only real gains they have, Brian Elliott, I think, is an upgrade in the backup role. Curtis McElhaney, in my opinion, not really a great backup. They really had to roll with Vasilevsky throughout the entire year. And maybe a guy like Brian Elliott in a backup role can give some more rest to Vasilevsky that he definitely needs. And of course, they also added Corey Perry from the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, if you can't beat him, join him, right? The last two years, Year one, he was with the Dallas Stars, and they lost in the finals to Tampa Bay. And last year with Montreal, they lost in the finals to, you guessed it, Tampa Bay. So obviously, he's trying to make sure that third time's a charm for him, and he can finally win that Stanley Cup, being with a team that's already won back-to-back. -back. However, in terms of what they lost, they took a massive dip. I mean, they shedded their entire third line there. First being with Barkley Goudreau, very solid third line player. He decided to sign up the New York Rangers. Then we have Yanni Gord, who obviously is still a relatively young center, but he was claimed by the Seattle Kraken. And of course, Blake Coleman, who decided to part ways, signing with the Calgary Flames. And they also lost Tyler Johnson, who was ended up going to Chicago. Now he's a bit of a salary dump, so I guess it's not really a key loss, but you know, he's still a pretty solid depth scorer. And then, of course, David Safard, who, you know, a very solid defenseman for this team. He was playing on the third pair for the most part, so I'd say that their defense is still going to be okay. But yeah, losing that guy definitely going to hurt their depth a little bit. Now, despite all the depth they did shed, this definitely is still a very elite team all around. And they definitely will make the playoffs, and they probably could go on another playoff run. I think a lot of people can easily see that happening. So in terms of who my top five scorers are for next season... First, I got Nikita Kucherov. If he's fully healthy, I think he will surpass 100 points. He's just that elite, especially in the playoffs. He's amazing. 
So in the regular season, we have him scoring 36 goals and 74 assists for 110 points. We all know Kucherov, he's an elite winger. There's an argument to be made that he's a top five player in this league. Or maybe, maybe it's conclusive. Maybe it's consensus that he's a top five player in this league. But there is a lot of elite talent. But anyway, if healthy, like I said, he should contribute over 100 points. And second, I'm going to go with Braden Point having a really good season. 34 goals, 45 assists for 79 points. Now we know he elevates his game come postseason. But in the regular season, I mean, he's going to be playing with Kucherov. who's going to feed him a ton. He probably should surpass 30 plus goals like he did in the past. He even had a 40 goal season a couple years ago. So yeah, this seems like very fair production for him. He probably should hover around a point per game like he did last season when he was not playing with Kucherov. And at third, I got Steven Stamko scoring a pretty respectable 33 goals and 38 assists for 71 points. Now Stamkos to me, he's a bit of a wild card because I feel like he definitely could produce a ton more. We know he has the skill set to produce like 85, 90 points like he did in the past. But I just feel like his usage in Tampa Bay is being a little bit overshadowed by guys like Kucherov, Braden Point. And of course, Andre Palat, who completes that top line. But I guess he's still effective in his role. He's very solid. He's one of the best power play scorers in the league. So it wouldn't surprise me if he scored over a point per game. Now, I don't. But I feel like even with 70 points, I mean, that's pretty reasonable production from him. I don't feel like anybody would complain about that. Then in fourth, we got Andre Palat. I have him scoring 22 goals and 44 assists for 66 points. We know what Palat is. He kind of is the third wheel on that top line with Nikita Kucherov and Braden Point. But I still feel like he's a very good top line contributor and he has a lot of chemistry with those two. So I feel like in that top line role, easily should produce at the very least 60 points. And in fifth, I'm going to go with Victor Hedman to score 14 goals and 51 assists for 65 points. Although a lot of people would point out that he did take a little bit of a step back in terms of his analytics. I still feel, in my opinion, he is the best defenseman in this league. Until he proves he slowed down while fully healthy and not battling injuries over the course of the year, to me, he's still the greatest in the game right now on the blue line. That includes Kale McCarr. I know Kale McCarr is on the rise and he probably will be the best defenseman for years to come. But right now, I still think it's Victor Hedman, but that's just my opinion. As for Hedman, we all know he's a great two-way defenseman. He's very solid defensively, big body, very physical, the huge presence, and he produces a ton of points. He's a great contributor all around, five on five or the power play, you name it, you can count on him. So in terms of where I see this team entering this season, I know they lost some key pieces and that could hurt their depth scoring. But until proven otherwise, I still feel this is the best team in the league. I mean, they won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. They should easily make the playoffs. I think they are a lock to make the playoffs. And they definitely should contend for a third straight Stanley Cup. With that, I have them first in the Atlantic Division, finishing with a 57-21-4 record for a total of 118 points, making the playoffs, no question. And I also will say that they will win the President's Trophy. I mean, they just have a complete roster all around. They got the stars, the superstars leading this squad, Braden Point, Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kucherov, Andre Palat leading their scoring. On defense, a ton of solid options. Victor Hedman, Ryan McDonough, uh, Mikhail Sergachev. This is a very complete team. And of course, Andre Vasilevsky, again, the best goaltender in the league right now. Although I am more of a guy that likes to see change, so I don't really want them to win a third straight Stanley Cup, but I definitely can see it as a possibility. They definitely have a good shot at it. And they probably are a favorite to come out of the Eastern Conference. So I feel like they should at least maybe make the Stanley Cup Finals, honestly. Now I do feel like there's a lot of really good teams in the Eastern Conference, but I do feel like there is some question marks for every team that you can kind of nitpick. Whereas the Tampa Bay Lightning, you know exactly what you're getting especially in goal they have the bona fide guy in Andre Vasilevsky where a lot of teams in the east goaltending is kind of a question mark let's be honest and the reason why I use goaltending as a key here I just feel like goaltending is a huge huge factor in the playoffs it is crucial probably the most important position so unless you have that number one guy that stud in net it's hard to win a Stanley Cup all right so that's gonna wrap up my video on my season expectations for the Tampa Bay Lightning love to hear your thoughts in the comments section I know a lot of you probably think this team is gonna make the playoffs but I guess what I would ask you is do you think they have what it takes to three-peat or do you think the losses they had in their depth scoring and a little bit on the blue line is going to impact this team negatively and they will not be able to three-peat again let me know what you guys think thank you guys so much for watching click like if you like this video and consider subscribing to the channel and i will talk to you in the next video see you guys later